to see you here. Are you ready to give God a praise? Come on, let's praise Him. Yeah. 
with the voice of triumph. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Shout out to God. Oh, big turns. Big turns. Big turns. Big turns. We are victorious. We are victorious. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Ano niyo po sa Bible, lagi sinasabi na shout unto God. All you people. Ang sarap sumigaw. Para tayong nakakawala dahil ang Panginoon natin ang siyang tagapagligtas. Fighting for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I just want to welcome every one of you here at the Rock City Church. Welcome to the Rock. This is the place that you can call home. Amen. So welcome po mga online and on-site family. We're so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. Grabe, ang sarap sumigaw at magbigay papuri sa Panginoon. Come on, if alam ang pinaglalaban ka ng Panginoon, higit pa dyan ang palakpak mo. Come on, higit pa dyan ang sigaw mo. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ang sarap malaman na may Panginoon tayo na laging lumalaban para sa atin. Thank you, God. Lord, we're just so thankful. We're just so thankful for who you are in our life. See, so, well, before we continue to worship, can we lift up our hands to God? Come on, just be thankful. Just be thankful. Come on, whenever you face a battle, He is there for you. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, hindi po kami titigil na magbigay papuri sa inyo, Panginoon. Because this is our weapon, oh God. This is our weapon, Lord. Alam mo po kaharapin namin pagsubok, oh God. You will remain steadfast. You will remain faithful, oh God. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence this morning, God. We invite you in this place, Lord. Come and touch, come and touch, come and touch, come and touch your people, Lord. Come and touch your people, oh God. This is who you are. This is who you are, Lord. There is no one like you, oh God. There is no one like you, Jesus. So God, we offer up this time of worship to you. God, let there be no distractions. But Lord, we will focus on the one, Lord, who will set us free. We will focus on the one, Lord, who will give us victory, Panginoon. Maraming salamat. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. He wages, He will win. 
Before we continue to worship the Lord, I don't know if you really understand what we are singing. At sabi po ng kanta, it may look that I am surrounded, but I am what is really happening. Hindi ko po alam kung sino dito dumating, may mga problema, may dala-dala ka right now. I don't know what's going in you, around you. Maybe you feel like you are being surrounded. Ng mga problema. Kabi-kabilaan, sabay-sabay. And maybe right now you don't just feel like raising your hands, worshiping the Lord. But the song is a reminder to everyone na yung akala mong bumabalot sa'yo na problema ay actually binabalutan ito ng Panginoon. Amen. Sino po dito nagagalak that the battle is the Lord? Come on! Nandito ka na lang din. Dumating ka na dito. Alam ko yung iba sa atin, matindi yung pinagdadaanan mo. But you have chose to stand up and go to the house of the Lord because you believe with all of your heart that this battle belongs to the Lord. And this is how I will respond. This is not, come on, my battle. God, this is your battle and I will see the victory. Lift those hands. Come on. Itas mo yung kamay mo right now. As I count one, two, three. Sisigaw tayo with a victory shout of praise. Are you ready? Are you ready? We will shout the name Jesus. Sa pagpila ko po ng tatlo. Come on. Get ready. One. So. Shout Jesus. Jesus, this is how, and this is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. Sing, sing, and this is how. This is how I find. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. And this is how I find my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
we'll lift those sins to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, something is happening. Pag tayo po ay kumonekta sa Panginoon. Hallelujah. Come on, He is here right now. The one who is fighting your battles, He is in the room right now. Come on, lift those hands. Hallelujah. We will magnify the name of the Lord in this room right now. Come on. Sige, taas mo yung kamay mo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Habang tinataas mo, tumingala ka sa Panginoon. Come on. We will magnify you, God. Oh. Come on. Open your mouth and start to worship Him. Hallelujah. Come on. Fix your eyes in Jesus. We exalt you, God. We magnify you, King of kings, Lord of lords, the one who is fighting our battles. Oh, God, be enthroned on the praises of your people. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we worship you. We honor you in this place, Lord God. Hallelujah. Salamat po sa presensya niyo, Panginoon. And today, we will give you the highest praise. We will rejoice. For you have won the victory, God. Thousand years ago. Thank you, Lord, for the garment of praise. Oh God, instead of the garment of heaviness, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. That put tayo kamo shout a big amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Sige po. Sampong segundo palakpakan natin yung Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You reign victorious, God. Hallelujah. You are an overcomer. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pwede po ba tayong maghanap ng limang tao at sabihin natin, You are an overcomer. Sabihin po natin to ng merong confidence. Inaantok pa tayo. Iba yung iba sa you are an overcomer. You are... Hindi po ganyan. Sabihin po natin with confidence, with swag. Come and sabihin mo, you are an overcomer. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sabihin mo, hindi ka talunan. Mananagumpay ka. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sino po nagagalak na nandito siya sa bahay ng Panginoon right now? Once again, palakpan po natin sa Lord. Amen. Welcome po everyone to the Rock City Church, a place to call home. Welcome home po sa bawat isa. And right now, I just want to welcome everyone who uh, came here for the first time. Kung kayo po ay dumating dito na first time nyo, pwede po bang itaas ang inyong kamay? We want to honor you and welcome you. Palakpakan po natin sila. Come on. Kung malapit ka, Sa tao na first time niya lang, pwede mo ba siyang hawayan at sabihin mo, welcome to the, the Rock City Church, come on. Sige po, pakitaas po yung mga kamay once again. We will be giving you a small token as an uh, appreciation po. Sige, taas po ng kamay, may mga ushers po lalapit sa inyo para po magbigay ng uh, onting uh, gift at kaunting cash po, mga 10,000 lang. Eh. Eh, de joke lang. <laughs> Amen. Pati daw yung dinabisita, nagtaas ng kamay dahil narinig yung 10,000. Amen. <laughs> Sige po, meron pa po bang hindi nabigyan ng sampung libong palakpak? Amen. Once again, nagagalak po kami sa mga first-timer natin na nandito. Uh, we want to honor you and uh, acknowledge your presence. Alam niyo po, hindi po aksidente na nandito kayo. And we pray that this is not the first and the last na mag kayo. We're looking forward to, to see you every Sunday. At kung wala pa po kayong church, ay nagagalak po kami na i-welcome kayo and we hope that this is the place that you've been looking for. Ito the Rock City Church. Amen. Once again, palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. Amen and amen. And uh, before we go to the Word of God, kaunting announcement lamang po. No? At uh, sino po dito alam na meron tayong daily prayer na tinatawag nating immerse? Can I see hands? Sino dito alam niya lang pero di siya nagjo-join? <laughs> Bumaba ulit. No, yung ating pong, uh, daily morning prayer na immerse ay uh, medyo papalitan po natin no, 
at uh, may onting pong changes. Naniniwala po ako in every season ay dinedirect tayo ng Panginoon at tayo po ay uh, tinuturuan kung paano gawin yung mga bagay-bagay. At uh, ang nais ko po dito sa pamilya ng Dorok City Church ay maintindihan po natin that prayer is our own responsibility. We have intercessors, may prayer team po tayo who are interceding for us. That's good. But instead of doing it daily, for I think for two to three years, we're doing it simula po pandemic every day. But right now po, yung corporate prayer natin, our corporate gathering, hindi na po daily but magiging every Wednesday na lamang po siya. So yung immerse po natin again, instead of every day magiging every Wednesday na lang po siya. And since once a week na lamang po siya, we are looking forward na mas marami po yung maka-attend. Either po nagpe-prepare kayo for work that time, just uh, log in po sa Zoom nyo, pwede po kayong sumali at makap- makapakinig. At uh, yung nais po natin, baka po yung iba nagtataka, we, we, st- we are still honoring yung importance po ng prayer, but rather than corporate po yung prayer lagi, gusto po nating turuan yung church na maging responsible sa kanyang own prayer life. Tama po ba? No? At dahil yung nais po natin dito ay matuto po tayong magbasa ng Bible at manalangin on our own. Yun po yung rason bakit po tayo mag-every Wednesday na lang via Zoom. No? And uh, last announcement po, so it, this coming Wednesday na po yung immerse natin. And uh, sino po dito ay nakarating doon sa Women with Purpose last week? Can I see hands? Ayun. Na- nag-gather po yung mga women natin sa The Rock City Church the U. At ang bilang po nalang umabot sila ng almost 99. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. No? Wow. At hindi po papahuli yung mga kalalakihan. Can I see the hands of our men in this house ages 21 and above? Come on, can I see hands? Come on. 21, pakitas yung kamay kasi po. We will meet, oras naman po natin to. we will meet on April 1. Saturday po ito. No? Sa The Rock City Church, the U, 9 o'clock in the morning. At uh, iipunin po natin yung mga men of valor. When we say valor, it, 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 it speaks about uh, a courage. No? Pagiging matapang. No? So pag-uusapan po natin ano ba yung mga nais ng Panginoon na nagawin sa mga kalalagihan po natin. So, so don't miss out. Again po, 21 years pat- pataas. Can I see your hands? Ayan, makita-kita po tayo sa April 1. And bago po matapos yung service mamaya, please don't forget to sign up. Mag-register po tayo. This is all free. Mag-sign up lang po kayo sa labas para po mabilang natin kung ilan po yung uh, ipiprepare nating steak. Amen. Pork steak. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Sino po ready na sa salita ng Panginoon? Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to Are you ready for the Word of God? Come on, come on. Yung mga sa taas, ready na po ba sa salita ng Panginoon? Amen and amen. Let's go to the Word of God. And today, I want to continue yung story po na iniwan natin last uh, Sunday. I want to continue the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, just open it. Sundan nyo po ako sa, sa buong chapter 3. And uh, follow me as we go through. And gusto ko pong bigyan to ng title, Stand Firm in the Faith. Ayan. Tinan mo yung katabi mo, sabihin mo, Stand Firm in the Faith. Come on, come on, come on. Sige po. Pwede po ba yun? Kausapin natin sa paligid natin. Come on, sa, sa kaliwa, sa kanan, sa harap, sa likod. Sabihin mo, stand firm in the faith. Come on, come on. Talk to your neighbor. Stand firm in the faith. Let's all bow our heads as we pray. Lord, we honor you and we welcome you, God, in this place. We know that you are here. We can feel your nearness, Lord. And we are excited for what you are about to pour out in this place, in this room, Lord, we are ready. Do your thing, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, sa bawat isa, that we may be able to, to understand ano po yung nais mong sabihin sa amin. Holy Spirit, help us na ma-enlighten po kami. Ikaw po yung mag-illuminate sa aming kaisipan to understand ano yung nais mong sabihin sa amin ngayong araw na to. Bless your servant, God. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Makakaupo na po yung bawat isa sa atin ngayong umaga. 
Amen. Stand firm in the faith. Once again, say stand firm. Ayan. A little recap po ng story natin. We started it on Daniel chapter uh, 3. At kung naalala niyo po, uh, uh, in Daniel chapter 2, ay nagkaroon po ng dream si King Nebuchadnezzar about sa isang shining statue. At na-explain po natin itong statue na to na ito ay may gold na may gold na, na ulo at yung iba't ibang parts din po ng kanyang katawan ay iba't iba rin po yung pagkakagawa. No? May bronze, may silver. No? At uh, na-explain na po sa atin na yun po ay yung mga iba't ibang klase ng kingdoms na susunod kay King Nebuchadnezzar. Tama po ba? So, uh, there was this great uh, image of gold in the plain of Dura na 90 feet tall, ganun po siya kalaki, and 9 feet wide, and the commandment of, of King Nebuchadnezzar was clear, no? na pag maririnig po nila yung, yung music, ay sila po ay magbabow down at magwo-worship sa imahe pong ito. At napaka-clear din po that the penalty for refusal to bow down and worship that image Ay ano sabi? Sila po ay tatapon sa what? Kurnuhan ng apoy. Sa fiery furnace, they will be cast out into the burning fiery furnace. And to cut the long story short, alam po natin na ito pong tatlong uh, kalalakihan pong ito na sabi po ng mga, mga commentators, theologians na sila po ay, uh, what they call this, sila po ay nasa like 17 years old lamang. So, ganito po kababata <laughs> si Shadrach, Meshach, and what? Abednego. At tinayuan po nila yung pinapaniwalaan nila na meron lang isang Diyos na buhay na sinasamba at walang iba kundi ang kanilang Diyos. Nandiyan po ba tayo? So, this, they disobeyed at ang nangyari po, Nebuchadnezzar's rage no? Ang nangyari, nag-ngit-ngit sa galit po si King Nebuchadnezzar doon sa report sa kanya na sabi, mahal na mahal naming hari, meron tatlong batang Hebrew na ayaw sumunod sa iyo. Pinatawag niya, nagalit siya, at alam po natin na binigyan niya pa ito ng second chance. Tama po ba? Na sabi niya, bibigyan ko pa kayo ng isang chance na kayo ay sumunod at magpatira pa. But after King Nebuchadnezzar offered the second chance, still, these three young Hebrew men, what, rejected the offer. So, malino po, nakita natin dun sa story, kung paano po sila naging firm doon sa kanilang pananampalataya. And as we go through the, the following verses ng kanilang story, gusto ko po kayong bigyan no, ng, ng tatlo pong components na makikita natin dun sa story as they stand firm in their faith. No? Tatlo pong bagay. I want to give you three components that we can see in the story as these three young men stood firm in their faith. Number one, we can see that standing firm, we need to understand, it takes courage. Come on, say that with me. Courage! May tapang. Tama po ba? No? Pag sinabi po natin courage, we're not talking about the person who is not afraid of anything. Pag sinabi nating matapang, hindi po ibig sabihin na ang tao ay walang kinakatakutan. Tama po ba? But what we're talking about here is someone who probably still feels those fears sa buhay niya, but chooses not to bow down to them. Sino po dito may mga nararanasan pa rin pong takot sa buhay niya hanggang ngayon? Can I see hands? Come on. Takot kang lumabas sa comfort zone mo? Takot kang gawin itong mga bagay na to? Uh, uh, takot ka na, 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 na sumunod minsan sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon takot kang bitawan yung pinapabitaw ng Panginoon tama po ba? lahat po tayo nakakaranas tayo ng iba't ibang klase po ng takot and it doesn't mean na hindi tayo natatakot normal po na may takot but we are choosing not to bow down to them nakita po natin itong uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, nasabi po dito, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. Tinan mo courage. Tinan mo tapang ng tatlong batang ito. 
nang sila po'y nakipag-usap dito sa hari. But mas maganda po yung version na to sa Living Bible na sabi niya, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, listen, we are not worried about what will happen to us. Ilan po kaya sa atin dito may tapang na sabihin na hindi ko kinakatakot kung anong mangyayari sa akin basta ang nais ko ay masunod ko ang kalooban ng Panginoon. These three young men chose to disregard fear and something rose up on the inside of them. Iba po pag tinatayuan natin yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon ng may tapang kasi po nakakalungkot nowadays we don't really see this quality sa buhay po ng mga Kristiyano because we've gotten into the habit of bowing down to fear instead of putting on courage. Nakakalungkot po dahil may nararamdaman na takot maraming Kristiyano Instead po na tayuan nila yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon, ang nangyayari, sila po'y nagpapatira pa. Sila ay nagbabow down sa takot. Instead na sila po ay, what? Ipaglaban po nila ang pinapagawa ng Panginoon. We need to understand that courage isn't the absence of fear, but courage is standing firm in spite of your fear. Once again, yung, ta- yung courage daw po ay what? As in the absence of fear, pero yung courage is what? Standing firm in spite of your fear. Again, alam ko po, karamihan sa atin, nakakaranas po ng takot kabilaan. But I'm telling you, I'm here to encourage you, church, this morning that you need to stand firm kahit na natatakot ka. Hindi ko alam anong kinakatakutan mo. Hindi ko alam kung anong pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa iyo that is taking you so long bago mo gawin 'yon. I don't know what it is. But kahit na natatakot ka, come on, tibayan mo yung loob mo at tayuan mo yung nais na pagawa ng Panginoon sa iyo. Pwede po ba nating palakpakan yung Panginoon right now? Come on. Naniniwala po ako na kahit sinasabi ng tatlong batang ito na we are not worried Hindi ibig sabihin na hindi sila nakakaramdam ng kaba. Ikaw ba naman nasasabing tatapon ka doon sa apoy, hindi ka kakabahan. So just imagine, na kahit sinasabi nila yon, pero yung saludo, kakanyan niyo. We are not worried, King Nebuchadnezzar. Just imagine. Normal lang po silang tao. Nakakaramdam po ng takot. Pero hindi sila nagpatira pa sa takot. Gusto ko pong i-relate to sa panahon natin ngayon. Because many today, they also claim the Christian faith, they claim to believe that Jesus is their Savior. Tanongin mo yung tao ngayon, naniniwala siya kay Jesus. Kilala niya si Jesus. Sinusunod niya yung Diyos. But here's the thing. When they are faced with challenges or temptations, they give up this faith. Yun po ang Yun po yung nakakalungkot. Pakibigay lang po sa asawa ko sandali. Sorry. Again, marami pong naniniwala sa Diyos. Marami pong uh, uh, sinasabi nila na kilala ko ang Panginoon, sinusunod ko siya, pero pag naharap na po sila sa mantinding kapagsubukan ng buhay po nila, yung faith na ine-embrace nila, binibitawan nila. Hello? Nandiyan po ba tayo? Pag yung faith ngayon ay nagre-require na po ng sacrifice, marami po hindi mo na makita. Hello? Pastor, medyo masakit siya dahan-dahan. Nandyan sila pag okay yung nangyayari, pero pag kailangan na ng sacrifice, kailangan na mag-extra mile, yung faith na yon hindi mo na mahanap po nasaan. Sabi nga po nila, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Dapat yun applicable din sa ating mga Kristiyano. Hindi tayo nagsisilbe, hindi tayo nagsuserve, hindi natin minamahal yung Panginoon for the sake of benefits. We don't love the Lord because we are getting something from God. 
But we need to understand that we need to love the Lord and we should love the Lord regardless of we are getting something or what. But, but because we understand and we believe that God is worthy of all the praises and glory sa buhay natin. We understand kung anong ginawa niya sa krus ng kalbaryo para sa atin. Kaya hindi tayo nagmamahal, hindi tayo naglilingkod dahil po sa pagpapala lamang. Ito po yung gusto kong makita sa Dark City Church. May blessing or wala, nasa church ka. May blessing o wala, nagpapatuloy ka. May blessing o wala, nasa squad ka. May blessing o wala, tuloy-tuloy lang. Come on, palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. Ayaw po natin ng isang superficial na pananampalataya. Tama po ba? Church, don't abandon God pag hindi mo natatanggap yung mga pinagpipray mo. Kasi darating po yung time, we need to understand there will be many times, many times that our faith will be tested in life. Ito po yung purpose eh. Bakit may mga apoy sa buhay natin para po ma, 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 patunayan na totoo, genuine yung pananampalataya natin. So you, you better get ready, church. Your faith will be tested. Your worship will be tested. Masarap mag-worship pag bago yung, 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 yung cellphone mo, bago lahat sa'yo, maganda yung nangyayari, wala kang problema. Pero pag dumating yung problema, ititest ka pa rin kung marunong ka pang mag-worship. Your loyalty will be tested sa Panginoon. I love what David Jeremiah quoted. Sabi niya po dito, The world is crying out for men and women, boys and girls, who have conviction of heart. And I love this. Listen. And who will not change their convictions on the basis of their circumstances. Wow. Ang Diyos daw po ay naghahanap ng mga kalalakihan, kababaihan, na ang gagawin po nila ay tatayuan nila yung conviction nila. Kung ano po yung pinapaniwalaan mo, dapat hindi po ito nagbabago kahit anong sitwasyon mo, anong nangyayari sa buhay mo, pare-pareho lang. Nandiyan po ba tayo? Minsan tayo po, guilty tayo, yung conviction natin nagbabago depende sa kasama natin. Hello. Sana hindi mo makita yung sarili mo pag napasama ka dun sa mga grupo. Kanyari, rin grupo ko, rin kayabi ako, mapanagkas lang. Minsan mga panagkas, kung bagya, pastor, bagya mo. Sorry na, bagya mo, ditak mo. Pag sa church, okay ka. Pero pag lalabas na, minsan mapapasama ka sa grupo, eh paano yung grupong yun? Ikaw lang yung kristyano. What if you will find yourself in a situation that you are the only one who believes, who, are, who is a believer, a follower of Jesus. And everyone is partying and drinking. At aalokin ka nila. Ano sasabihin mo? Isa lang, no. Metong mo, ne. Saan yung conviction mo? Will you stand firm in the faith? Sa loob po ng kwartong to, madaling mag-hallelujah, madaling mag-praise the Lord. Madali yun, lahat ng kasama mo eh. Nasa church ka eh, alam problema kanita. Ang tanong sa labas, pareho ka ba dito sa church at sa labas? Alam ko po, medyo masakit lunokin yan. Minsan yung amen mo, nasa ilong lang. Amen. Amen. Pero alam niyo po yung purpose ng word ni Lord, hindi, hindi para kilitiin ka. I'm not here to satisfy your ears and to tickle those ears and sugarcoat the gospel. No. I'm here to tell you the whole counsel of God that even when it hurts, we need to hear it. And magtiwala po kayo, sasabihin at sasabihin ko as your pastor yung pinapagawa at pinapasabi po ng Panginoon. So, wag pong magbago yung conviction natin. Look to your left and to the right. Sabihin mo, wag magbago yung conviction mo. Sabihin mo, don't change. Wag magbago yung conviction mo. 
Naghahanap po yung Panginoon ng mga tao na hindi parang kamilyon na nagka-comoflage kung nasaan sila. Nandiyan pa po ba tayo? Ang bigat po nun, ha? People who will not change their convictions on the basis of their circumstances. You know, church, it takes courage to stand alone. Mahirap to, eh. Kailangan ng kakaibang tapang para tumayo ka mag-isa. Because most of us, we are comfortable, go, for example, sa faith natin, we are comfortable going to church because may kasama ka. Masaya naman talagang pumupunta sa church na may kasama ka. Pero paano kung dumating yung time na yung mga kasama mo, hindi na nag attend Paano kung iba mong kasama, hindi na nagpapakita, hindi na sila nagpatuloy, magpapatuloy ka pa ba? That's the question. It takes courage to stand alone. You need to understand that there will come a time in your life that people will 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 remove people sa buhay mo. Alam niyo po ba 'yon? No wonder yung mga mga tao na wala na sa season mo ngayon, inalis na ni Lord. Hello. Kasi hindi na po sila pwedeng sumama sa next season ng buhay mo kasi wala na silang parte. Either kaibigan niya na hindi mo kapareha na yung ginagawa ng Panginoon instead na ikaw yung mas mahila sa kanya. Inaalaw ng Panginoon na maghiwalay na lang kayo so that po maging tuloy-tuloy yung paglakad mo sa kanya. It takes courage to stand alone. And it's very important. Listen, everyone in this room, it's very important and we need to to find this necessary to learn how to stand alone in this day and age in which we live. Because if it is necessary now, as the days grow darker, then how much more necessary will it be for our children and grandchildren? Kailangan po ng model ng bawat isa na ako po bilang tatay, kailangan makita ng mga anak ko na tinatayuan ko to so that pag time naman nila, tatayuan din nila kasi nakita nila yung model. This is not just about me and you. This is all about the next generation standing for what is true. Kailangan mong maintindihan yon Kung magulang ka, tatay ka, nanay ka, kailangan mong gawin, ayusin yung pagtakbo mo ngayon kasi nakatingin yung anak mo. Hindi lang anak mo, may next generation na sumusunod at nakatingin sa atin. Nakakatakot na pong mabuhay sa panahon natin ngayon. And it takes courage to follow the Lord. It takes courage to love the Lord. It takes courage para iwaksi mo yung mga bagay na pwedeng humila sa'yo papalayo sa Panginoon. That's number one. We need to learn how to stand up, come on, for Jesus and to stand on the principle of God's Word. So standing firm, it takes what? Courage. Number two, makita natin sa story ni, ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, standing firm, it takes faith. Come on, say that with me, faith. Ano po sabi sa Daniel chapter 3, 17 to 18? Sabi po kay King Nebuchadnezzar, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to to save us. Ganyan po sila katapang. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if He doesn't, yun po yung matindi. Kahit hindi kami iligtas ng Diyos namin, pinapaalam ko sa'yo, mahal na hari, hindi pa rin kami magpapatira pa dyan sa Diyos, Diyos na yan. We will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Even po itong mga batang ito, they didn't know God's plan, but yung, 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 yung confidence nila, yung faith nila ay nanggagaling sa scripture, sa promises ng Panginoon sa kanila. At yun po dapat yung i-apply natin sa buhay natin. Most of the time, we, we, are not, uh, we don't know what will the, the future will, will be. Tama po ba? 
May mga time na tayo po ay nandun sa verse na hindi natin alam kung anong magiging bukas, anong kahihinat na ng mga bagay na ito. Pero yung alam mo lang is yung pangako ng Panginoon na hindi kanya iiwan, hindi kanya pababayaan. Ano sabi ng Psalm 23 verse 4? Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Ang sarap po na nanamnamin yan at i-embrace mo yan na kahit pikit mata ka, hindi mo alam. Maybe yung iba sa inyo right now, you are going through a dark season ng buhay mo. You don't know the next phase, what will happen next. But you just know the promises of God, Lord. You will never leave me nor forsake me. That even though I walk through the valley of the darkest, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hello? Dahil alam ko, Lord, poprotektahan mo ako. 2 Timothy 4.18, Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into His heavenly kingdom. All glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Gusto ko pong ma-stir up yung puso natin na mapaalalahanan po tayo yung kahalagahan na alam din natin yung mga promises ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. Sabi ng Bible, Lord, I want to hide your word into my heart that I will not sin against you. I-treasure po natin yung mga salita, promises ng Panginoon so that every time na namangangailangan ka ng kuhugutin sa puso mo, mapapaalalahanan ka ng salita ng Panginoon. Nandiyan pa po ba tayo? So makikita po natin, balik tayo dun sa story. Meron silang pananampalataya na kahit anong mangyari dito, naniniwala kami na ang Diyos ay para sa amin at sinasamahan kami ng Diyos. Meron po ba tayong ganong klase ng pananampalataya? I want to encourage somebody right now, if you are a Christian, you have a personal relationship with God and you live a sur- you are living a surrendered life, here's the good news. You are in a win-win situation. Ulitin ko po, tatlo lang po yung gising at nakarinig nun. Kung ikaw ay kristyano, kahit ano yung pinagdadaanan mo right now, gano'n man kadilem, gano'n man po katindi yan, gusto kong ipaalam sa'yo that you are in a win-win situation. Basta na kay Jesus ka, hindi ka lugi, kapatid. Pastor, can you, can you show me yung sinasabi mo? That if you're a Christian, you are in a win-win situation. For example, if you will die for your faith, you're still, a, it's a win situation because you get to go or you get to be with God kahit mamatay ka. Nakita niyo po yun? Win pa rin yun. Kahit mamatay ka para kay Kristo, may pangako po siya na makakasama mo siya. Ano pa po? If you, were, if you will live for your faith, hindi ka naman mamamatay at hinayaan ng Panginoon, pahabain pa yung buhay mo at ipapang ipangalandakan may itang kasalpantaya na yan yung faith na yan if you will live for your faith then gagamitin ka pa ng Panginoon to take other people with you may impact pa rin gagamitin ka ng Panginoon para makapagwin pa po ng maraming tao sa pamamagitan mo kaya magtiwala po tayo sa Panginoon if there are some people Christians minsan po may ganyan na pag nakita natin sayang Bata pa siya. Kinuha na siya ng Panginoon. May mga kaibigan din po ako, Pastor, maagang kinuha ng Panginoon at age of 34. Minsan masasabi mo, sayang, sayang. Pero ang, pag ang taong yun ay nasa Panginoon, hindi po sayang. Kasi tanging ang Diyos lamang po'y nakakaalam kung naisa pamuhay niya na po yung purpose niya sa buhay. Kung nagawa niya na po yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Nandiyan pa po ba tayo? So it's a win-win situation. Let's go to the to the story, chapter uh, verses 19 to 25. Balikan po natin. Sabi po dito, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego dahil nga po ayaw nilang mag-bow down that his face become distorted with rage. Grabe, no? distorted. Gano'n kaya kagalit itong taong to. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Imagine, mainit na, pinainit pa po ng pitong beses. Ganon siya kagalit sa ginawa ng tatlong batang ito. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army 
to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up. Ano pong ginawa? Tinali po sila at tinapon po sa furnace. Fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger, sabi dyan, had demanded such hot fire in the furnace, listen, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. Grabe ka init. Even po pala mga taong nagtapon sa kanila, pati sila nasunog sa sobrang tinde ng init. Verse 23, So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames, but suddenly, verse 24, tinan niyo po, ito na po yung climax na story, but suddenly, come on, say suddenly, Sabi dito, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement. Paano po kayong jump up? Yan na siguro. Tumalun sa, sa, sa gulat niya. He jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Listen, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Sabi niya, nagulat siya. Hindi ba tatlo lang yung tinapon natin doon? Yan na, grabe. Hello! Di ba tatlo lang yung tinapon natin doon? Sabi ng, ng mga nagtapon, Yes, Your Majesty, or yung mga nakapalibot sa kanya na matay na pala yung nagtapon. Sabi niya sa verse 25, Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around into the fire unharmed, and the fort looks like a god. Sabi niya, tingnan mo, bakit apat yung nakikita ko doon? At nung tinapon sila, kung naalala nyo, nakatali sila. Pero ngayon nakikita niya, wala na po silang tali, lumalakad sila, at may pang-apat pa na anino na parang Diyos, sabi niya. Nandiyan po ba tayo? Ito po'y paalala sa atin. Sabi ko nga, hindi ko po kayo kilala. Hindi ko alam kung anong nangyayari sa inyo. Ano yung pinagdadaanan nyo? Anong klaseng apoy? Maybe yung iba nandun po sa part na seven times hotter. I don't know. Pero alam nyo po, may mga time na inaalaw yung Panginoon sa buhay natin. And God, listen, does not always deliver us from the fire. Hindi po lagi pwede niyang patayin yung apoy at hindi na lang matuloy. Pero minsan may kaparaanan si Lord. Bakit inaalaw niya? God does not always deliver us from the fire, but He sometimes has a purpose for allowing us to go into the fire. Kung tayo po ay mamimili, most of the time, pwede nating sabihin, Lord, wag mo kong hayaang dumaan sa matinding kapagsubukan. Baka hindi ko kayanin. But you need to trust God, that He is a wise God. You need to trust Him that He knows what He is doing. He knows. And when you go through fires of life, you need to remember na yung apoy, God is using the fire not to destroy us, but to purify us. Come on. Ginagamit niya lang yung matinding kapagsubukan at apoy, hindi para patayin ka, kapatid. Pero para i-purify ka niya. Para lalabas ka doon na puro. Na alam niya, He is a wise God. Nakita niya na yon. Na dito lang sa, sa sitwasyon na to, nagagamitin niya pag inalaw ka niya doon, lalabas ka, mawawala yung yabang mo, mahahambol ka, magiging kontento ka. Si Lord, alam niya eh. Alam niya. So dapat po maiba po yung mga prayers natin. Instead, manalangin ka na, Lord, palitan mo, alisin mo ako dito. Maybe this is the time na sabihin natin, Lord, ayusin mo yung puso ko. Lord, wag mo kong alisin dito, pero palitan mo yung puso ko. Ayusin mo yung puso ko. Tama po ba? I remember that as the nation was facing the captivity, the Lord said to the people through Isaiah in Isaiah 43 verse 2. I love this verse na sabi niya po dito, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. 
when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Ang sarap po ng promise ni Lord sabi niya dyan is, I will be with you. Whatever you're going through right now, sapat na po yun. I will be with you. Five words, but it means a lot to us. Palakpakan natin yung Panginoon. I will be with you. And because of the courage and the faith displayed by these three guys, makita po natin ang Panginoon po ay nagpakita sa kanila, sinamahan sila. Ang sarap na malaman na yung Diyos natin, He is not just the kind of God who simply looks at you from afar. Nasa trono niya, tinitingnan ka niya. Ang sarap po na yung Diyos natin, sinasamahan niya tayo sa apoy. And yung panalangin ko, anumang apoy ng buhay yung pinagdadaan mo right now. I pray that you will see Jesus in your furnace right now. Makita mo yung Panginoon. Sinasamahan ka niya. Makita mo siya. Lumalakad kasama mo. Makita mo sa pag-iyak mo, umiiyak din siya. Wow. Ang sarap po. Yan po yung Diyos na sinasamba natin. Yan yung Diyos na tinataas mo yung kamay mo. Yan yung Diyos na pinapapurihan mo. Tama po ba? So verse 26 and 27, then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, nagulat po siya, at sinabi niya, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here, sabi niya. So lumabas po sila, they stepped out of the fire, and look at this, verse 27. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Ganyan, magprotekta yung Panginoon. Alam niyo po po yung matindi. Not a hair on their heads was singed. And their clothing was not scorched. Ito yung matindi pa. Hindi man sila amoy usok. Tinapon sa apoy kalabas, buo yung buhok, pumasok si Shadrach, makapumada yan, ilwalya makapumada yan pa mo. <laughs> Hindi man nasunog yung uniqlo niya. Antindi. Inamoy, Hindi man sila nangangamoy usok. Ganyan magprotect yung Panginoon. Parang yung katabi mo, dumaan sa matinding pagsubok, pero hindi mukhang galing doon sa pagsubok. Hallelujah! Come on! Palakpakan mo nga si Lord. Antindi ng bagyo na sinapit niya, pero lumabas siya doon, parang walang nangyari. Ang sarap nun, no? Yung lumabas ka doon sa pinagdadaanan mo, tapos masasabi ng iba, parang walang nangyari. At doon mo mapapapurihan yung Panginoon at masasabi mo, Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Maririnig mo sa paligid mo, hindi mo kang galing ka sa pagsubok. Hindi halata na ganyan katindi yung pinagdaanan mo. Ganyan po kagaling yung Panginoon natin. And here's the last thing that I want you to know about taking a stand number three. Standing firm. It, what, it takes courage, faith, and lastly, it inspires others. Alam niyo po, may malaking bagay na, na pag ikaw ay tinayuan mo yung gina, pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa'yo, it will create an impact sa tao sa paligid mo. Sometimes we're so afraid of taking a stand because we think that people around us will hate us. That's the truth. Takot ka na iwan ka nila, takot ka na, 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 na may masabi sila sa'yo. 
But we need to understand that if you want to please God, hindi pwedeng sabay to serve two masters. You cannot choose the other that this day I will choose God, then the following day I will choose to please men. No. That's impossible. Pag pinili mong paglingkuran ng Panginoon, dapat siya lang po. Kasi hindi mo pwedeng paglingkuran yung dalawa na sabay. Tama po ba? Balikan po natin. Again, it inspires others. Tingnan nyo po yung nangyari sa story. King Nebuchadnezzar at first is what? Kinapersecute itong tatlong batang ito? Tatlong guys na ito? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Kinahadlangan sila at nais pasunod rin na sumamba sa Diyos Diyosa na ginawa niya. Pero bandang huli, tingnan nyo po, nagkaroon ng ng matinding turnaround. Yung, yung, yung hari na kumakalaban sa kanila ay ginamit pa ng Panginoon at nakasama pa nilang sambahin ang Diyos nila. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. The truth is when you, when you take a stand, it will inspire others to stand with you. Ang sarap Wag nating tingnan yung negative. Wag nating tingnan na baka baka may masabi sila sa akin, baka hindi na magustuhan. Ang gusto po nating makita dito is for example, merong merong mga Kristiyano na nagtik ng stand sila and there and there are people around them na magsasabi, Kristiyano din ako pero hindi ko magawa yun, pero dahil nakita ko sa kanila. Gusto ko rin sumunod sa Panginoon. I hope may mga tao sa paligid natin na mai-inspire sa buhay natin. I pray that there will be people around us na magiging witness na nais din nilang sumunod sa Panginoon dahil po nakikita nila ito sa atin. Look what had happened. No, what happened to, to these three guys, verse 28 and 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Tingnan nyo po, verse 29. This is very powerful. Therefore, I make this decree. Yung unang decree niya, sumamba dapat lahat sa Diyos Diyosan. Ngayon, nag-iba na yung decree niya. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb to limb. And their houses will be turned into hips of rubble. There is no other God who can rescue like this. Palakpakan po natin, Panginoon. <laughs> Hindi kaya yung iba sa atin dito, hinihintay lang ng Diyos na magstand ka? I want to encourage somebody, if your mother or your father, your family, your loved ones are against your faith, against you going to church, against you standing for the faith that you're believing in? Maniwala ka, sa, habang pinaglalaban mo yan, darating yung time, gusto kong i-declare po ito, na yung mga kumakalaban sa yun nung una, makakasama mo rin dito sa church, nagpupuri sa tunay at buhay na Diyos. Kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa store niya to gagawin niya sa buhay mo. Nung una, kinakalaban ka niya, nung una, di niya maintindihan. Ganyan din po yung nangyari. Tinan mo, binaligtad ng Panginoon. At siya pa po yung gumawa ng decree na dapat sambahin lamang ang Diyos ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Siguro after po noon, nagpatugtog sila ng praise and worship, There is no one like our God. Ala kang kalupa, Gino. Yun siguro yung kinanta nila noon. That time na nag-rejoice nag, 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 nag po sila. Bandang huli, si Nebuchadnezzar pa po ay na-inspire. Ginamit na Panginoon yung sitwasyon na maging witness siya. Sabi niya, matindi yung, 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 yung conviction ng mga taong to. Pati siya napasama, napawaw siya sa Diyos ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Sino dito gusto niyang mangyari na dahil tatayuan mo yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon, mapapawaw yung mga tao sa paligid mo, sa Diyos na sinasamba mo? Tama po ba? So sa pagtatapos po natin, alam niyo po, pati po yung mga tao na hindi mo expect 
na magsa-stand sa tinatayuan mo, mangyayari po yan. And as we end, I want to give you three things that you can stand for. Ano ba yung mga dapat na bagay na tayuan natin? Number one, simple po, stand in prayer. Sabi mo, katabi mo, stand in prayer. Come on. Stand in prayer. Hindi po ibig sabihin yan, pag nananalangin ka, dapat nakatayo ka. When I say stand in prayer, tayuan mo, ipaglaban mo yung pananalangin. Alam ko po, naniniwala ko that God is giving us a a, 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 a direction right now. For me, it's not a bad thing na yung ating daily morning prayer ay ginawa na natin once a week. But I do believe that God wants to teach His church about the importance po of praying and meditating at yung spiritual disciplines sa ating sarili. Tama po ba? Ilang years na po tayong nag sa church for that, it's time na tayo naman po aralin natin yung Bible, manalangin tayo mag-isa. Hindi mo kailangan ng ibang tao para manalangin. Hindi mo kailangan yung ibang tao para po buksan yung Bible mo. Anyway, sabi ko nga po, tutulungan po namin kayo. No? We will be opening a, 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 a series for that on how to do your, your, your devotions para po matulungan yung bawat isa sa atin. So stand in prayer. No? You need to understand yung, yung prayer, it's not a religious activity exercise. It's simply a conversation with God. Sometimes we, we, we have over-spiritualized yung prayer na dapat ganito lang yung itsura, ganito lang, dapat talagang yung panalangin mo, umaalab, isa, dalawang oras, talagang nakalugod ka. Maganda po yung ganon, pero ayaw po natin na mag-create ito ng, ng ma-intimidate tayo. Dahil gusto po natin maturuan tayo, sabi nga ng Bible, that we need to pray unceasingly, non-stop. Ibig sabihin, make your life a prayer. Yun yung meaning ng unceasingly. Ibig sabihin, whether you are driving, you're working, you are walking, exercising, cooking, everything, ano man yung ginagawa mo, ikaw ay nananalangin. Nakikipag-usap sa Panginoon. Pwede bang yun po yung gawin natin starting today? Nagda-drive ka, kausap mo yung Panginoon. No? At pagkausap mo yung Panginoon, wag naman yung pinapakita mong talagang ikandiling ka. Baka naman lumayo yung mga tao sa'yo at iniisip. Scary. Baka makita kita mamay sa esong kanyang-kanyang ka. Nang malilyari kaya kapag sabi yung Gino, di ka masigla. Hindi naman po ganon. Tama po ba? So let's stand in prayer. Prayer is not a passive activity. Come on. Sometimes mararamdaman mo that prayer is like you're going to a battle. Come on. Kaya dapat yung prayer natin puno-puno ng passion at ng courage. Ephesians 6, 11 to 14. Sinorkat lang po natin ito. Put on, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. We need to stand our ground. Gusto mo pong matayuan mo yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon? To resist the devil, you need to stand on your ground at manalangin. Tama po ba? Number two, ano po yung dapat natin tayuan? Stand for your purpose. Come on, say that with me. Purpose. Amen. Huwag kang sumali sa agos ng mundo. Sabi ng Romans 12 to, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Huwag mong hayaan na sumunod ka dun sa molde ng mundo. Ang mundo meron pong sariling way ng kanyang paggawa. Pero po, hindi dapat tayo sumusunod sa agos ng mundo. Pero tayo po dapat ay sumusunod nakaayon sa kingdom po ng Diyos. Alam niyo po, anytime na gusto mong gawin yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon, ang impyerno po ay nagingit-ngit para i-distract ka sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon sa iyo. Nandiyan pa po ba tayo? Here's the reason why you need to find your purpose and to stand for it. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, sabi dyan, stand firm. Once again, say, stand firm. Sabi po dyan, let nothing move you. I love that, that, that phrase. Stand firm and let nothing move you. Wag kang magpasway sa approval ng tao sa paligid mo. Wag kang ma-pressure sa mga peers mo. 
tayuan mo yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa iyo. Huwag kang magpauga. Yung ibang Kristiyano onting onting ano lang, onting ganyan lang ay umuuga na. Mahina po yung pundasyon. Nandiyan pa po ba tayo? Give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I pray, kabalik nyo po bukas sa skwelahan, sa trabaho nyo, gawin nyo yung purpose nyo, magliwanag yung buhay nyo at ma-reflect yung glory ng Panginoon. And lastly, you need to stand for God. Why should we stand for God? Simply because He stood for us. God took a stand for us by sending His one and only Son, Jesus, so that our sins could be forgiven and we could step into a close relationship with God. He didn't do it because we earned it. No, church. God took a stand for our lives because He loves us. Mahal niya po tayo. And the best ways that we can respond to that is to take a stand for Him. I love this translation, the message translation sa Matthew 10, 32 to 33 na sabi po dyan, Stand up for me against world opinion and I'll stand up for you before my Father in heaven. Yan po yung familiar na verse na sinasabi niya, kung i-deny mo ako sa harapan ng aking ama, ng, 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 ng maraming tao, i-deny din kita sa harapan ng aking ama pag dumating yung araw po ng judgment. So yun po yung rason bakit kailangan nating tumayo para po sa Panginoon. Dahil po, 2,000 years ago, tinayuan na po tayo ng Panginoon. Nakita niyo yung ginawa kay Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego dahil tumayo sila para kay Kristo. Hindi sila pinabayaan ng Panginoon kahit sila po ay nasa apoy na. As I end, alam niyo po, in other parts of the world, yung pressure na nararanasan ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ay same din po ng binasa natin dito sa Daniel chapter 3. Gusto ko pong ipakita sa bawat isa, Christians today are facing the threat of death if they insist on remaining faithful to Christ. We are here very comfortable to practice, to pursue the Lord to practice yung faith natin. But there are people around the world na maybe sa oras pong ito ay pinupugutan ng ulo. Inihintay yung oras na sila po ay mamamatay na dahil tinayuan nila yung faith nila para sa Panginoon. I want to read this and show some pictures. I want mention yung group para po maging confidential but sabi po dito sa post the military recently attacked us sabi niya life is so suffocating here to die for Christ is easier than to live for Him this is the story of one missionary na sabi po niya a pastor from a nearby town came to our church and gave this powerful testimony. Recently, we were attacked by the military. One pastor was killed and three pastors persecuted. Because of this, some, because of this, some of our people lost their hearing for days. The military have total control of us and we cannot do anything without their permission. We cannot even bury our loved ones who died. We cannot go out between 6 in the morning and 6 at night. Not even if we are deathly ill or in the case of an emergency, we are not allowed. My wife and baby are sick. I cannot do anything. The only food we have is a small portion of rice. We make it into soup and eat it carefully. We give most of it to our baby. My wife and I share a small portion. 
Kaya na sabi niyo, life is so suffocating here. Three Christians committed suicide recently. A large part of the population have run away to escape town. Several pastors have left the ministry to die for Christ is easier than to live for Him. Nasabi po ni Leon sa sobrang hirap mabuhay. Sobrang hirap ng pinagdadaanan nila. At sabi niya po dito, to die for Christ is just an instant to live requires such a long time. But sabi po na missionary na to, but I am here to stay. God gave me this ministry whether I die or live. I'm here to stay. Sabi yun, napakahirap. Ang hirap mabuhay. Dahil binigay ni Lord sa akin itong ministry, sabi niya, narito ako. Nagpapatuloy Many young people that I have shepherded that have left the town. Now I have 20 including children. Thank God I will minister to them. I have come here to give my testimony. But now I will go back to be with my family. Through the journey itself is dangerous. We trust God. We follow Christ for His glory. Pray for us. This is the testimony of a, a, a missionary na nakaranas po ng ganun kabigat. And as we try to, to compare our situation here, we are far more comfortable. And sometimes it pains me to see and hear the stories. Nandito tayo, komportable tayo, and yet, we can even share the gospel to other people. But there are a lot of people, pastors, missionaries, all around the world fighting for their lives because of their love for Christ. I pray that this story, as we end, will inspire us to take a stand for Christ. Gawin po natin yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Hindi ito biro. Mamotivate tayo sa ginawa ng mga misyonary ito. So right now, carefully and silently, can I ask everyone to please stand? Come on, tumayo po tayo right now. You may be having a moment right now where your heart is crying out. Maybe there are some people here, you're stirred on the inside because you know you haven't been taking a stand for God. And maybe you've been, a, you've been compromising as a Christian. Or maybe you are not a Christian at all. You just know that your commitment level sa Panginoon is not where it needs to be. And today, dahil po sa salita ng Panginoon, kinausap ka ni Lord, and now, you are ready to take a stand. And church, it all starts by taking a stand in your heart. And this is something that happens on the inside before it is ever seen on the outside. If the word, the message this morning has pierced through your heart and you're not even sure if you already have a relationship with Jesus, kundi ka sure na may relasyon ka na sa Panginoon and you want to make a stand by surrendering your life to Jesus, itaas mo yung kamay mo ngayon kung gusto mo magkaroon ng personal na relationship sa Panginoon. Come on. 
para lang po ito sa mga tao na hindi pa nila tinanggap yung Panginoon. And right now, you want to make a stand. Come on, just raise your hands. Huwag kang mahiya to take a stand for Jesus. And if you may, if you can, come on, just follow the simple prayer, Jesus, I've been living without you. And I don't want to do that anymore. I've done a lot of things, things that are wrong, and I need your forgiveness. Lord, I accept your love and grace for me and ask that you would be my Lord. Thank you for making me new. Thank you for washing away my past. Now, I hand my life over to you and ask that you'd help me walk out your plan for my life. Amen. Ngayon po ako nalang po mananalangin. Just bow your heads. And can we lift our hands to the Lord right now? Come just lift your hands. Lord, Thank you, Lord. God, this is a privilege that we are here right now. We can lift our hands freely, Lord. We can come to church freely, Lord. Without the fear, oh God, of being persecuted, Walang fear ng buhay namin. Walang pangamba. That's why, Lord, I pray that this word will awaken us from within. That you will do, use this sermon, O oh God, this message to stand up for you and live out our purpose and follow you, God, no matter what the cost is. Lord, I bless your people.
welcome to this week's edition of The Rock. We're halfway through the month and God is up to something even greater. So, we want you to be aware of the events and things happening in our church, so let's get started. Do you have a heart to serve God and His people? Here's for you. As God calls us to go beyond borders, why not go out of your comfort zone as well to serve here in our church? Join the Rock Serve Team here at SM Cinema 2. If you want to know the ministries available for you, don't hesitate to sign up at the guest experience area or scan the QR code that you can see on your screen. We're excited to serve God with you. Hi kids! Here's some good news to cheer you on. We have a new kids area and exciting activities waiting for you. For all the moms, dads, and guardians, we want to ensure the safety of your children. So before leaving your kids at the kids area, we will be requiring you to answer a survey form to know about some of the basic information of your children. Survey form and Fetcher's ID will be provided at the kids' teacher's booth. Have you set your reminder yet? See you in our youth gig every Saturday, 3 p.m. at The Rock Duo. If you're wondering why we love Saturdays, well, come and sit with your friends and classmates. You may also catch us live on our TikTok at The Rock Youth Official and get ready to hang out and party with us. Need a break from work? Come and join us on our Young Adults Night this Saturday, 6 p.m. at The Rock Duo. Don't hesitate to invite your workmates and friends. It will be a night full of fun, fellowship, and God's Word. We'll see you there! Do you want your relationship with God to grow? This is your first step. Join our Grow Track classes now. Our growth classes cover everything you need to know about your Christian journey and the Rock City Church. It covers basic Christian foundations and our discipleship process. If you want to know more, then head over to our Grow Track station at the Guest Experience area and sign up. You can also fill out the online form that you can see on your screen. If you want to know more about what the church is doing and be updated on what's happening, you may visit our page, The Rock City Church, or you can check out our social media platforms that are flashing on your screen right now. Once again, I am Eliza and you are watching The Rock. Here at The Rock, we celebrate milestones. So, we would like to congratulate um, Princess Gonzalez, Doctora, all right, for passing the Physician's Licensure Exam. Nasan po siya? Ayan, we are celebrating with you. Congratulations, Doctora. And of course, um, uh, we also want to uh, welcome to The Rock family, si Sirene. Alianige, ayan. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your dedication, baby Sirene. All right. So here at the Rock, talaga we're our family. Okay. So we really enjoy. Uh, we really want to be with you through thick and thin. So we also believe in the power of prayer. For those of you here, no, na hindi po, uh, I, na you want to be prayed for, don't hesitate to. Uh, approach our prayer team right here. Ayan, kumakaway siya. Itinataas. Ibinagayway. Alright. If you need prayer, wag po muna kayong umalis dito sa cinema and we would love to pray for you. Ayan. Thank you, Lord. And yes, malapit na lang. Uh, uh, we can we can go go out now in the cinema but I have few announcement. Una, the Impact Discipleship class will be rescheduled to April 13. So if you want your relationship with God uh, to grow deeper this year, if you yung prayer nyo, you can sign up and register sa ating Impact Discipleship Station outside the cinema. If you want to know more about the Bible, ayan, ito po ang class na para sa yo. So we'll have an enrollment fee of 300 pesos, which will cover your printed manual no expenses. Next naman, of course, is our growth track class. It, uh, for Badge 3, is now open for registration. So, pwede po tayo magpa-register outside. And of course, uh, we have registration also for Men of Valor sa mga gusto pong mag-attend ng ating mga fellowship. Lastly, for our first-timers, please don't leave the building. Our uh, senior pastor would like to welcome you. So, please stay on this side, on, left, on the left side. So, yun lamang po. Maraming salamat for worshiping with us 
Good morning, The Rock. Bye and God bless.